Alright folks, this new little PCB is a Tetris, it says Tetris, um, it's a bootleg board again, but it's actually very much identical to the uh, original Atari board, uh, it's part of that pile that I got recently, and uh, what we have here is the, uh, the two Pokies, which are sort of input output um, Atari type chips, um, we got the uh, processor uh, uh, 6502, which is um, kind of a, a 6800 compatible or bus compatible type of processors. We've got our two, uh, three EEPROMs here. We've got, uh, I see a RAM here, another RAM here. I see a few PAL chips, uh, one, two. Uh, is there another one? Three, four. Oh wow, it's quite a few PALs. Now, I have nothing to program these PALs. There's another one here. Um, hopefully, hopefully these work, um, which we'll see. And uh, if not, that might be a good occasion actually to start learning how to program these uh, at some point. Uh, maybe I should ask my friend Porchy. <laughs> I know he can program them for me, but I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind knowing how to program these myself and even dump them that way. That way, I can actually send these to his archive. Um, anyway, um, let's power this on. Uh, I suspect this is not working. There's not much happening. I'm not surprised actually. I see a lot of. Uh, look at this cap here. And uh, this cap is loose. This cap is loose. And uh, this cap is loose. And uh, is there heat on that? Not much. We might have a, a dead amp as well. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna do some tidying on this board. Uh, change the caps. Um, look underneath. Maybe reflow the socket or just check for continuity. Um, Reseat, reseat these uh, these guys. Yeah, there's a few. Uh, there's uh, some a bit of maintenance. You know what? I made this uh, thing fan enclosure ages ago uh, for fumes. It's probably time to start using it. Um, I have a rack here for my 12 volt, so I'm just going to plug it to that. And with a bit of luck, it won't blow up. Beautiful! Let's keep going. Alright, so I've changed all the caps, um, uh, and well, that's really all I've done. I've reseated the, uh, the, uh, all the chips that were on sockets, so the two Pokey chips and these, uh, these three uh, EEPROMs. And, uh, well, I'll show you the board. Boots! Uh, it boots now. Um, it seems fine. I can credit their sound, uh, which is good news. And uh, unfortunately, the start button. Oh yeah, sorry, that's my fault. Uh, the start button um, doesn't seem to work. So if I press the uh, God, come on. If I press the credit button, it works, but the start button doesn't do anything. Uh, if I look at the board, where is it? If I look at the board here, um, the start button is right here. So this is the input. Um, it, it arrives here, it goes into, um, well actually let me dig out the schematics. Okay, so this is the uh, schematics for the input. We've got our, our two pokey chips, which are these guys here. Um, and what we see here, it's actually cut off, but we see it's the inputs 
for player one, player two, I think there's coin one, coin two, it seems to say. It's hard to read. Um, here I can't make out exactly which is which. Um, I have figured out that this is our line here. Uh, so we've got, sorry, we've got pull up resistors here. I suspect it's a resistor array going to 5 volt on one side. Excuse me for the focus. So there you go, going to 5 volt on one side. Uh, we've got a row of uh, caps here just to keep the voltage constant and some form of uh, just, well, an extra an extra resistor, maybe a ray or individual resistors here, actually, in this case. And uh, if I look at the board, we're missing all the uh, all the caps. Not that they weren't they weren't there before, and I checked photos of various other boards, uh, bootleg boards, um, they don't have these caps here. They have, here is the resistor arrays, there's two of them, one for each pocket chips, and uh, I couldn't find another row of resistors, so I'm assuming um, it goes straight into, well, I, I know it goes straight now into one of the pokey chips. I've actually just traced it, so here is, uh, you see number one here, that's actually our button one. Come on, focus, maybe not. Yeah, our button one. Um, on the PCB, I'm just going to switch this off. On the PCB, it's linked, in fact, to button two. I've made marks already. And uh, there's a small trace, you see here? There's a small trace joining button one and button two. Uh, they go to this tab here or something. Or is it tab underneath? And it's actually connected to the start button as well uh, on the other side. Uh, and same thing happens for. Uh, I've made marks here, so you can see, identify. These go, um, these go to a few places. These go to these, uh, well, pull-up resistors, or actually, they, they branch off here. Um, but um, the player one, the start button, goes to pin 14. I've also made a mark right here. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, um, and it goes to pin 14. Excuse me, I to uh, recharge my phone, so it's plugged in, and I put it on the on a uh, the crane back on the crane but you see here this is a little marker so that's pin 14 the interesting thing is if i let's just say i turn off this guy uh to pin one uh, so this is i've the uh, oscilloscope on pin one and let me just show you here uh, right hand. so either it's pin one or pin two uh, uh, button one or button two it just goes low when i press come on in place it just goes too low um, what's interesting is if I connect this now if I connect the board there you go it's connected um, powered on and if I yeah, come on. Um, if I press uh, button one it sort of goes low but not low enough so it stays at around 390 something volts um, which is not enough to signal at all. So it's something is happening, something is working, but n not as we want. So uh, I'm gonna put here the. Let's see if I can show you everything. Um, if I have this on pin 14, it's gonna be harder to do. There you go. No. Look at it. Yeah. So it doesn't actually go low enough. I suspect the uh, the whole thing is sort of stuck high all the time, um, which is weird. Um, so it could actually be a bad pokey chip. The interesting bit is um, because that was my first thought. If I remove uh, the uh, the pokey chip here. And it only goes to the pokey chip, and that's it. So there's no other um, components on this circuit. It goes directly from here. There's a pull-up resistor here. I've checked the resistor; it's fine, and it goes directly to this uh, pin 14. If I so, it's not the chip that's causing this problem. So I suspected this was indeed. Um, Maybe a bad uh, uh, corrosion underneath the socket, or a bad socket. Um, and when I looked at the sockets, uh, let me let me just show you here. 
so this is a pin 14 it just didn't look right uh, where is it here there's something odd uh, let me dig out my microscope thing and just show you oh here's my mark for pin 14 and I'm gonna try and focus on this so you see the um, this is a normal tab this one here is all mangled and whatnot. Um, I wonder if it's just only making partial connection. And uh, sort of keeping this guy high most of the time, not not letting it or not not letting the the, uh, the leg go low enough. I I don't know. Um, but it, they're single swipe sockets, so it won't hurt anyway to. Uh, and swap it. I, I suspect this is our problem here. Uh, this leg. Yeah. Well, let's change that and see what happens. Something cool about these shots. Um, yeah, I love it. Anyway, um, here's our new uh, our new socket. So let's have a look. There you go. Um, Start button is not working, uh, all the controls, so we just start on easy. And thank you. There you go. Um, button is working. So that was indeed uh, just a bad uh, socket. And these uh, single throw uh, sockets are indeed known for, well, causing all sorts of issues. Um, they don't age well, and uh, and sometimes this is what happens, they get bad. One interesting thing is that if you look at the uh, schematics here, we see, so we have a, um, this is our color uh, uh, RAM, um, and this goes to this uh, 273, and then it goes through an entire amplification circuit. So the colors come out of here, and they're actually just uh, amplified. So, uh, so this display nice and, and vibrant on, uh, on a pretty much any monitor. Now you can correct this on the monitor itself and uh, that's not a big deal. Um, on this guy, I'm, I'm sort of limited and the interesting part here is, uh, so actually, let me grab the, the photo of the, uh, the, the original PCB. Uh, so this is our color RAM, this is our 73, and then it goes through, this is our amplification circuit here, and we can see this, uh, all these uh, three transistors and different stuff. Uh, that is entirely missing from this guy. I'm gonna try and stay, let me switch on this light. There you go, great, less shadow. Um, but it's it's entirely missing from this, uh, this, uh, this PCB. Um, so let me just, there you go. So we have our, our color. Come on, focus. There you go. Um, we have our RAM here for the colors. We have our LS273. Uh, and uh, we've indeed a resistor array here, but all that amp amplification circuit is missing. In fact, it seems if uh, uh, whoever made this bootleg uh, um, shortcut a lot of this amplification stuff and filtering stuff. So, as a result, uh, the colors are a bit faded. So it's actually quite normal that the colors are like that. It's not a, it's it's not an issue. It's just uh, the entire ampl amplification circuit for the uh, video signal is is missing. So we get this sort of faded look, which is not a big deal on a on a on a, a CRT. Um, especially with open uh, the, the circuit being open on the uh, arcade machines, you can actually just change um, all the stuff uh, directly on the chassis and it'll fly back here. I'm somewhat limited; I would need to open everything. It's not a, it's not worth it. Um, it's sort of meant to be like that, if you will. Uh, they, they went the cheap route. It's still cool. It's still very cool to um, to get it working. Anyway, folks, uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting. Don't forget Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all these things. Uh, there's a Discord server if you want to talk to like-minded folks uh, about art or music or fixing computers and arcade stuff, all sorts of things. And uh, don't forget, if you want to help the channel, there's also Patreon. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.